Today we're going to learn lesson four, 第四课。他是我的汉语老师。他是我的汉语老师 ，which means she is my Chinese teacher. Now let's move on to our first part, warm up. So we can see here are six pictures and six new words. Now first let's look at the new words. First one is 他特啊他 the initial 特 And the final ta. Okay, now read up for me. Ta, ta. It means he, he, or it can mean just someone, random person who has who you cannot be sure of his or her gender. Okay, so this is ta. Next one, the pronunciation is the same. It is still ta, ta. But the character is a little bit different, so it means she or her, she or her, ta. So this one means he or just someone, and this one means her, she. The next word is 同学，特文同，西约学，同学。Read up to me, please. 同学，同学 it means classmate, classmate. Okay, next one is 朋友，破恩朋友友 it is 朋友 And the second word, second character 友 is neutral tone, so we should read it soft and quick. Okay, read after me, please. 朋友，朋友 it means friend, friend. Next one is 汉语老师，汉语老师，河岸汉一语语，乐敖老十一师，汉语老师 ，it means Chinese teacher. Now read after me. 汉语老师，汉语老师。Okay, last one is 中国朋友。中国朋友 ，this one is really easy to guess its meaning. 中国 we've already already learned it means China, right? China and 朋友 we've learned it here it means friend, friend. So China, this one, 中国朋友 means Chinese friends, Chinese friends. Now I will give you fifteen seconds. Try to fill in the blanks. Okay, time's up. Now let's see. First one, ta. This one means he or just someone, not without indicating any gender. So this one might be B. Yes, B. Ta, because he is obviously a man, a man, a male. And actually, this ta can only mean a single one person. Okay, one person. We are going to learn the plural version of ta later. Okay, so this one is B. Next one, she, ta, she, her. Which one? I think there are two answers, which is D and E. D and E. They're all females. Females. Next, 同学 classmates are. It is C. C. We can see they're in a classroom. Next one. 朋友，朋友，朋友 ，which means friends. So A and F, they all can be friends. The atmosphere is really friendly here. Okay, next one. 汉语老师 ，which one? I think D is 汉语老师 because we can see she's holding a pen and there is a white ball after her and there are. Chinese, Chinese on the whiteboard. Okay, last one. 中国朋友 is A because they look like Chinese. Okay, this is our warm up. Now let's move on to our first part, text. Second part, text and the new words. So first new word is 他 which is she and her. We just come across it in the warm up part. So this is she, her. 他，他 ，and the plural form of 他 is 他们 
we just need to put a man after it, then we can get a day. And they're all females. So this man, more and man, it is a, it is a neutral tone. So we need to read it soft and quick, soft and quick. Tamen means they, and they're all females. Now try to say, try to make a sentence. They're all Chinese by using they. They are all, they are Chinese. They are Chinese. Okay, try to make this sentence. Three, two, one. The answer is, 他们是中国人. 他们是中国人. We just learned 是 in lesson three, which means to be. And the thing before and after 是, they are equal, right? They are equal. So when I say they are Chinese, then I just need to put they and Chinese in these two parts. One is Taman and one is Zhongguoren. So Taman Shi Zhongguoren means they are Chinese. Zhongguoren means Chinese. Okay. Now try to say, try to guess how to say we. We. We've learned I before, right? We've learned I. I is wo. Still remember the pronunciation of me or I is wo. Wo. It is a third term word. And try to guess how to say we. It is woman. Woman. So we can see here, man is the plural version for the pronouns. Okay, woman means we. And still remember how to say him or he? It is ta, the same pronunciation, right? Ta. And the plural form of ta is taman. 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 Okay, this taman can mean they, and they can be only males, or this taman can be used when you are not sure the gender of this group of people. Okay, so this is ta, ta, and taman. Next word is shi, shi, a, shi. The initial is shi, the final is a, and the uh, Tone is second tone. Read up me. Shi a shi, shi, shi. It means who or whom. It is an interrogative pronoun. Okay, who or whom. Next one is de, 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 de. The initial de, de, and the final e, and the tone is neutral tone. So we need to read it up and quick. But for um, for you guys to can hear it clearly, I will read it more stronger. But you should read it soft and quick, okay? So this is the the read up me the the. It means it is a particle. It means something or someone belongs to something or someone. Okay? It is used after an attribute. Attribute which means something belongs to something or someone belongs to someone. For example, when you wanna say A is B, A is B, then in Chinese it is A the B, A the B, A the B. So the is just the same as English this, z, okay? Mm, for example, We've learned teacher is 老师, right? So teacher leads student. Teacher leads student. Student is 学生, right? 学生, student. So teacher leads student is 李老师的学生 in Chinese. 李老师 means teacher Li And student 学生, so 李老师的学生. The here is this thing. Okay, now let's move on to the last new word for text one, which is Han Yu. Han Han. 
Han yu. Read after me, please. Han yu. Han yu. Han yu. It means Chinese. Chinese. And it is the language, not Chinese people, okay? Chinese language. Han yu. Han yu. Okay, now let's try to read it from the start, each word twice. Three, two, one. Pa, pa, shay, shay, de, de, han yu, han yu. Very good. Now let's move on to the text. I will read it once and please pay attention to the pronunciation. Ta shi shay. Ta shi wa da han yu lao shi. Ta jiao li yue. Okay, let's see the grammars in it. So, first one, ta shi shay. It is a question. It is a question, which means who is she? We just learned ta means she. And shi we learned last lesson. It means to be. So, ta shi shui, actually, in the sentence order, we can see it is, she is who, she is who, which means, who is she, who is she. And the answer, ta shi, wo da han yu lao shi. So, here first, the subject is ta shi, and the verb is shi, shi means to be. And the Han Yu Lao Shi is the object. Object. And the means my. Wo means me. Wo means me and I. And the we just learned it means something or someone belongs to something or someone. So the means my. My. And Han Yu Lao Shi is Chinese teacher. Chinese teacher. Okay, Chinese teacher. And Ta Jiao Li Yu. This structure is what we learned in lesson three too. Ta Jiao Li Yu, which means her name is Li Yu. Her name is Li Yu. Jiao means call or to be called. To call or to be called. And this structure, somebody plus Jiao and plus a name is It is, it means someone's name is something. Okay, Ta Jiao Li Yue. Okay, from these two sentences, what can you see? The structures of these two sentences. We can see at the beginning, they're all started with the subject Ta, right? And then is the predicate. In the predicate, the verb is all Shi. And the object is Shei and word Han Yu Lao Shi. So we can see the word order of these two sentences are the same. Although one is question and one is a answer. One is an answer. One is an interrogative sentence and one is a declarative sentence. The, their word orders are the same, are the same. So in Chinese, it is really, I said, it is really easy to ask a question because it is the same, the word order is the same as the declarative sentence. So now let's try to read it from the start, okay? Read with me, read with me, okay? Three, two, one. Ta shi shei. Ta shi wo da han yu lao shi. Ta jiao li yue. Okay, this time I will be A and you will be B. Okay, three, two, one. Ta shi shei. Very good. Now let's switch the row. Okay, you will be A and I will be B. Three, two, one. Ta shi wa da han yu lao shi. Ta jiao li yue. Very good. Now let's move on to text two. The first new word for text two is 
หนาเมื่ออ่ะหนาตัว initial เมื่อ the final อ่ะ and the tone is the third tone เมื่ออ่ะหนา read after me please หนาหนาหนา it is a pronoun and it means which which หนาหนา okay next next new word is เกื้อวัวกัวเกื้อวัวกัว the initial เกื้อ The final war and the tone, the second tone. Put them together. Go war, go. Read after me, please. Go, go. It means country or nation. Country or nation. So when I want to ask which country, then it is 哪国 We just need to link, connect these two characters. Okay, 哪国 means which country. Which country. Now try to say which country's person. Which country's person? We learned how to say human and person before. So it is 哪国人哪国人 means which country's person. Okay, 人 means person, human. 日人人 Don't forget it. Okay. Now try to say. Hmm. Try to ask the question. Where are you from? Where are you from? The answer is, 你是哪国人？你是哪国人 ？We just said 哪国人 means which country's person. So when I want to ask where are you from, it actually means which country are you from, or which country's person you are. So this sentence becomes. 你是哪国人 ？You, you is the subject of this sentence, and 是 is the verb of this sentence. Okay, and 哪国人 is the object of this sentence. Okay, now try to remember how to say China. China is 中国，中国 and America is 美国，美国 very good. Okay, last new word of text two is ne, ne, ne. The initial ne and the final e, and it is a neutral tone which we should pronounce it soft and quick. Okay, read after me. Ne, ne, ne. Okay, it is a particle. It is a particle, and it is usually used at the end of a question. Question. Okay. Now let's read it from the start, each word twice. Three, two, one. 哪哪国国呢呢 Very good. Now let's move on to the text. I'm going to read it and please listen carefully. 你是哪国人？我是美国人。你呢？我是中国人。Okay, let's see. First sentence. 你是哪国人 ？We just learned it means where are you from? Where are you from? 你 is the subject of this whole sentence, and 是 is the verb, and 哪国人 is the object for the verb, and this part is the predicate of this whole sentence. 你是哪国人 ？Which country are you from? And be answered. 我是美国人。我 me 是 to be I am 美国人 American I am American。你呢？你呢？呃，你 means you and no we just learned it is a particle used at the end of a question and no actually is used to ask a question about something mentioned before. And for this sentence, 你呢 Something mentioned before is the nationality, right? The nationality, 美国人 So 你呢 actually is asking about you. What's your nationality? Where are you from? Where are you from? What about you? What about you? And A answered, 我是中国人我是中国人 I am Chinese. I am Chinese. 我是中国人 
Okay, this is a really easy text. Now let's read it from the start. Okay, three, two, one. 你是哪国人? 我是美国人. 你呢? 我是中国人. Very good. This time I will be A and you will be B. Okay? 3, 2, 1. 你是哪国人? 我是中国人. Very good. Now let's switch the role. You will be A and I will be B. Okay? 3, 2, 1. Excellent, excellent. Now let's move on to the last text. Text 3. Okay, let's see the new words. First one is ta. Not a new word. We just learned it when we are when we are studying the ta woman ta. And this is the Man ta, man ta, which means he or him, he or him, okay? Ta, read up me, ta, ta. Next one is 同学,特文同,西学学. The initial te and the final un and the tone, second tone. Put them together, tong. Initial xi. Final yu yu okay yu and the tone is second tone. 学,同学, read up to me please. 同学, 同学 means classmate. Classmate. So try to say we are classmates. We are classmates. We've learned how to say we, which is woman. And R is 是, we are, 我们是, classmates, 同学, so this sentence is 我们是同学, we are classmates, okay? And how to say they are classmates, they are classmates, it is 他们是同学, very good. Very good. Last one, 朋友. 朋友. Okay, 朋友. It is 朋友. E-O, yo. And yo is neutral tone. Neutral tone. We need to read it soft and quick. Okay, 朋友. Read up to me, please. 朋友. 朋友. It means friends. Friends. And how to say Chinese friend? Chinese friend. It is 中国朋友, yes, 中国朋友, so American friend is 美国朋友, very good, 美国朋友. Now let's try to read it from the start, each word twice, okay? 3, 2, 1. 他, 他, 同学, 同学, 朋友, 朋友. Now let's move on to the text, I'm going to read it and please listen carefully. Okay, first one. 他是谁? 他是我同学. 他呢? 他是你同学吗? 他不是我同学. 他是我朋友. Okay, for this test can be a little bit tricky. Now let's see it one by one. See the sentences one by one. First one, 他是谁? Really easy, it means who is he? Who is he? And answer is 他是我同学. He is my classmate. My classmate. So, still remember how to say my in Chinese? I am I. How to say I? It is 我, right? 我, and my is 我的, 我的. We just learned 的 is this thing in English, right? So why there is no 的 here? 
Why there is no de here? So please remember this question in your brain because we are going to learn it in the language point part later, okay? There is no de here. We just need to know it is Xue, my classmate. My classmate. So he is my classmate. Next sentence. Tana. Tana. We learned no is a question mentioned before, right? No is used to ask a question mentioned before. And before we are asking about someone's identity, right? Identity. And this identity question is about her. And in case this person doesn't understand this question, we said another question. Ta shi ni tong xue ma? Ta shi shi or she is ni tong xue. Ni tong xue means your classmate, your classmate. Ni means you, ni tong xue means your classmate. So, ta shi ni tong xue ma? Is she your classmate? And ma is what we learned before. It is a it is a particle. It is a particle used at the end of a question. Okay, so whenever there is a ma, it is a question. The sentence must be a question. Okay, next sentence. Ta bu shi wo tong xue. Ta bu shi. Bu shi is the negative form of shi. It means no, she is not my classmate. Wo tong xue, my classmate. And what is she? She is my friend, ta shi wo peng yo. Peng yo means friend, wo peng yo, my friend, my friend. Okay, now let's read it from the start. Three, two, one. Ta shi shi. Ta shi wo tong xue. Ta na. Ta shi ni tong xue ma. Ta bu shi wo tong xue. Ta shi wo peng yo. Okay, let's role play. I will be A and you will be B. Ta shi shi. Tana Tashini Tong Shema Very good. Now let's switch the row. I will be B and you will be A. Okay. Three, two, one. Tashi wa tong shue. Ta bu shi wo tong xue. Ta shi wo peng yo. Very good, excellent. Now, on to the language point part to answer some questions in our brain. So, first one is the interrogative pronoun shi and na, these two interrogatives. And shi is used to ask questions about someone's name or someone's identity. Identity. For example, First example here, Shui Shi Li Yue. Shui Shi Li Yue. So this is asking about who is Li Yue, right? Who is Li Yue? We already know the name of this person, but we don't know which person is Li Yue. Who is Li Yue? Next one. Ta Shi Shui. Ta Shi Shui. So this question is, who is she? Who is she? In this case, we already know this person, but we don't know this person's identity and name, right? That's why we we are asking, who is she? The next one, ta shi shi. The same as the second one, it means, who is he? Who is he? So we can see the structure of this. Shei questions, okay? We can see the structure is Shei, Shei, which means who, plus a verb, verb. It is usually Shi, right? Shi, plus a verb and plus a object for it, object for the verb. Or another structure is 
the subject plus a verb plus she. Okay, this is the two structures for this she sentences, she questions. Okay, now let's see another another thing. You can see sometimes she is at the subject position and sometimes it is at the object position. So it means she can be both parts in the sentence, both elements. It can be the subject and it can be the object. But when will it be the subject and when will it be the object? We can see here, this one, for this, for this situation here, we already know the identity, right? We already know the identity or the name. We know the name, Li Yue, but we don't know who. So here, when we don't know who and we know the identity, we will put she at the subject part. But when we don't know the identity, we will put she at the identity part, okay? This is she questions. The interrogative pronoun, she. They try to make a sentence. Try to make a sentence. Who are you? Who are you? Okay. The answer is, 你是谁? 你是谁? Not 谁是你? Not 谁是你? Because we already, we don't know the identity of you, but we know this person, right? We know this person, he or him or herself, but we don't know the identity of this person. That's why I put she at the object part. 你是谁? 你是谁? Okay, this time try to say, try to ask a question. Mm. Who is Ronnie? Who is Ronnie? This question, let's try to make it. This time we already know the identity, we know the name. Then the answer is, 谁是 Ronnie, right? 谁是 Ronnie? Very good, very good. So this is the interrogative pronoun, 谁. Now let's move on to next interrogative pronoun, which is 哪. 哪 means which, 哪 means which. It is used as a question to, um, to require, to require to determine one among several things or several people, several people. And the structure of it is 哪, 哪 plus a major word, major word or a noun, and plus a noun. It is the structure. Now let's see the examples. First example is 哪本书? 哪本书? 哪 here means which. 本 means a major word. It is a major word for books or things who look like books. Okay? 哪本书? 书 means book. 本 is 本本, third term word, and 书, book. 是屋书. 哪本书? So we can see first here is 哪, and then a major word, non, here. 哪本书? Which book? The okay, next example is 哪个人? 哪个人? 哪, here and 个 is the major word. It is a major word for, for almost everything. It is a really common major word, okay? It is a general one. You can use it to describe many things. But don't always use it to describe a person because it is not that polite. But for this occasion, it is okay, okay? Now, 哪个人 means which person, which person. Okay, last one. 你是哪国人? Now, let's just ignore 你是. We just see 哪国人 here. 哪, which, 国, here. It is a noun, right? It is a noun, which means country, nation. And the, another noun is 人, 哪国人, 哪国人 means which country's person, which country's person. And when I put 你是 before it, then the sentence become 
Where are you from? Where are you from? Okay, this is the interrogative na na. Okay, now let's move on to next part. Next language point: literal particle the structural particle the, which is neutral tone. Don't forget it, neutral tone. So it is actually indicates the possession belongs to something or somebody. Okay, and the and the structure of it is the noun or pronoun plus a the plus a the and plus a noun. It is the structure of it. Now let's see first one. Li Yue Shi Wa Da Lao Shi. So let's just ignore Li Yue Shi. Just see Wa Da Lao Shi. Wa Da Lao Shi in this sentence, Wa is the pronoun, right? Wa Da means this. And Lao Shi means teacher. So Wa Da Lao Shi means my teacher. My teacher. Okay. So Li Yue Shi Wa Da Lao Shi means Li Yue is my teacher. Next one. 这是我的书。书 we just learned it. It means book. 我的书 means my book. My book. And the 这, 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 initial 这, the final 呃, the tone, second tone. It means this. This is my book. 这是, this is my book. 我的书。我, the pronoun here and the book, the noun here, 我的书, my book. Last example is, 他不是我同学, 他是我朋友, 他不是我同学, 他是我朋友. Did you see anything strange? Did you find anything strange? There is no the here. Right? 他不是我同学,他是我朋友. No the here, but we use it as an example for the, because the is omitted here. It actually should be 他不是我的同学,他是我的朋友. Actually, it should be like this, but the is omitted. Why? Because when the noun or pronoun after the is a kinship or indicates a person, then the can be omitted. Okay, 同学 here, classmate is a person, right? 朋友 here is a 朋友, friend is a person too. That's why we omitted the, the here. We don't need to say 我的同学, we can just say 我同学, it is enough. So when you want to say my mother, my mother, then it can you can just say 我妈妈. You don't need to say 我的妈妈. Okay? It is the same as the other kinship in your family. This is the structural particle 的. Now let's move on to next one. Is the interrogative particle 呢? 呢? It is always usually used at the end of a sentence, at the end of a question, and to ask a question about something mentioned before. Something mentioned before. And the most common structure is a blah blah, and the sentence finish, and then b na. A blah blah, b na. Okay, now let's see the examples. First example. 我不是老师,我是学生,你呢? 我不是老师,我是学生,你呢? It means, I am not teacher, 我不是老师,teacher. 我, I am student, 学生, student. 你呢? What about you? What about you? 你呢? It is asking about the identity we've learned, we've mentioned before, right? Okay, next one is 她叫李月 她呢? Her name is Li Yue. What about, what about him? It is asking about his name, his identity. Last example 我是美国人 你呢? 
I am American. What about you? It is asking about your nationality. Nationality is mentioned before. Okay. It is really easy one. It is really easy one. So we are not going to spend too much time on it. Now let's just move on to next one. Next one. Try to answer the questions according to the actual situations of yourself. Okay, first question is, 你是哪国人? 你是哪国人? If you don't know how to say your country's name, you can try to um, Google it or try to find it in the dictionary, okay? 你是哪国人? For example, if I will answer this question, I will use I will say, 我是中国人, in this structure, right? Try to answer this question. 你是哪国人? Okay, next question. 你叫什么名字? 你叫什么名字? So this question actually means, what's your Name, 名字 means name, okay? 名字 means name. 你的名字, what's your name? So, answer the question. 我叫Ronny. Okay, next one question is, 你的汉语老师是哪国人? 你的汉语老师是哪国人? This question actually means your Chinese teacher is which country's person? Which means where are your Chinese teacher from? Where are your Chinese teacher from? So how to answer it? You should say my Chinese teacher is which country's person, right? So in Chinese it is 我的汉语老师是 中国人, okay, very good. 我的汉语老师是中国人, 我的汉语老师是美国人, 我的汉语老师是韩国人, as well. These are all right. Try to answer these questions according to your own situation. Next question is, 你的汉语老师叫什么名字? 你的汉语老师叫什么名字? So this question means, what's your Chinese teacher's name? Name. What's your Chinese teacher's name? They try to answer it. Answer it with me, okay? 我的汉语老师叫Rani. This is an example for the answer. Okay, last question. 你的中国朋友是谁? 你的中国朋友是谁? It means, who is your Chinese friend? Who is your Chinese friend? 你的中国朋友 means your Chinese friend. So, try to answer this question. I will give an example. It is, 我的中国朋友是李月. 我的中国朋友是李月. Okay, these are all for the questions for today. And let's move on to next part, to some exercises. First, we can see here is a Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Okay, now let's fill in the blanks. First one, 他是乔布斯, 七瑶乔波物布斯伊斯, 乔布斯. It is the translation of jobs in Chinese. 乔布斯. Read after me. 他是乔布斯. 他是乔布斯 means he is Steve Jobs. And 他是 what 人? 他是什么人? He is from America, so America is 美国人. Very good. 美国, 美国, 他是乔布斯, 他是美国人. Okay, next sentence. Let's see. Who is she? She is Lina, a tennis ball player, tennis player. And here is the sentence. 
她是李娜，李娜，她是李娜 ，She is 李娜 ，And she is which country? Which country is she from? She is from China. So let's fill in the blank. 她是中国人 ，Very good. 她是中国人。Okay, next. 她叫玛丽。她叫玛丽，玛丽 is the Chinese translation for Mary. Okay, 她叫玛丽。她不是我 something. 她是我 something. So this is what. What should we put here? We can see these two people. They are in a really friendly mood. They are chatting. So might they might be friends, and they might be not. Like student teacher relationship, right? So try to fill in the blanks. 她叫玛丽，她不是我老师，而她不是我学生，她是我朋友。She is my friend. 她是我朋友。The next one, last one, last exercise. 她叫大卫，他 he he's named. 大卫 is the Chinese translation for David. 他是我们的 He can be anything, anybody you want to be. For example, maybe your friend, 朋友 or teacher, 老师 or 学生 student. Okay, so the blank can be. 他是我们的朋友，他是我们的老师，他是我们的学生。Okay, now let's move on to the next part. The differentiation of the pronunciation of the initials, z, ch, sh, and r. These four initials. So for z, ch, sh, r, these are all initials pronounced by rising. Roll up our tongue like this. Roll up. For z and ch, these two. The tongue position are the same, okay? J and Ch, these two. The tongue position are the same. We need to rise up our tongue and make our tip of tongue touch the upper upper gum, the hard palate, okay? Hard palate, and immediately you leave a gap to make the air go through. So it is J and Ch, and the difference between J and Ch is the air. For J, the air is soft, and Ch. The air is much much stronger. Okay, z ch. You can try to practice it by by yourself. And for sh, for sh, we won't. The tip of your tongue won't touch the upper palate, the hard palate. It will always leave a gap here. Okay, z ch sh. Next one is r. For r, the tongue position is the same as sh here, sh. But the only difference is vibrate our vocal cord. Okay, read after me. R, r. You can try to put your fingers here. R. You can you can find it. It is vibrating really strong, really strong. So now use some examples to practice. Okay. Read after me. Read after me. Okay. Read after me. First one. 知识，知识。We don't need to know all the meanings of these words. We are just using the pronunciation of them to practice. Okay. 知识 Next one. 厨师，厨师 Next one. 生日，生日 Next. 上车。上车 ，next， 认识，认识 ，next， 常识，常识 ，next， 事实，事实 ，next， 超人，超人 ，next， 燃烧，燃烧 ，next。热闹，热闹。Next， 出差，出差。Next， 长城
Changcheng. Next. Shou Shu. Next. Shangchang. Shangchang. Next. Chao Shi. Chao Shi. Next. Chong Zhi. Chong Zhi. Okay, very good. Now let's move on. The N and N, these two finals, these two pronunciations of alveolar nasal and alveolar nasal. Okay, these two for N, for this one. N, N, we've learned it before. We will use the, we will rise up the, up, mm, the former part of our tongue. Okay. Rise it up. Mm, 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 and put your make your tongue touch the upper palate of your upper of your upper gum. Okay? Touch. Touch it. Touch it here. Touch it here. Okay. Mm, mm, read after me. Mm, mm. And for this one. Mm, mm, mm. You can see. We rise up the back part of our tongue, rise it up, and try to use your nose too. Try to use your nose too. And the shape of your mouth will be more wide open than mm, this one. Okay, try. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, this can be not that clear, so we are going to use the these two groups of Finals to practice it, okay? Listen and try to read after me. First one. An. An. Next. An. An. You can see the my mouth is more wide open when I want to say this one. When I want to say an. Next is yen. Yen. This. Yang. Yang. Next. One. One. Next. Wong. Wong. Next. N. N. You can see my tongue is rising up to touch the upper gum. Next. N. N. This time my tongue is not rising up to rise to touch it. Next. In, in, next, in, in, next, one, one, last one, one, one. Very good, very good. So this is the alveola and vela nasal. Now let's move on to the tongue sandy of. E, tone sandy of E. We've learned the tone sandy of Bu before, right? Bu, which is, it will change when it is before, before the fourth, fourth tone. When Bu is before the fourth tone syllable, it will change from first tone into second tone, right? For example, Bu Hui, Bu Hui. Okay, now let's learn the tone sandy of E. There are three rules of it. First one. When E is before uh, the first, the second, and the third tone, E will change to fourth tone. It will change from the first tone into the fourth tone. For example, E Zhang means one piece, one sheet. E Zhang. It change from E into E. The next one, E Tiao. Tiao is Second tone, right? So it changed to fourth tone. Last, last one, yi zhong. Zhong is third tone, and yi changed into yi. Yi zhong, yi zhong. Okay, and when it is before fourth tone syllable, it will change to second tone. Second tone, okay? For example, for yi ding, yi ding. Ding is the fourth tone, so it changed into second tone. Next, kuai. Yi kuai means one piece, one piece. Kuai is fourth tone, so it changed into second tone. 
So some of you might be really confusing. Then why it will change in front of all of the tones? Then why E is its standard tone is the first tone? That's because there are situations when E is used as the first tone itself. Let's see here. When E is used alone or in a number, used alone or in a number, it is the first tone itself. It won't change. For example, like D, E, E in D, E, it means first, first. So E won't change. Next, E, R, sun means one, two, three. It is used in numbers, so it won't change too. Next one, Xing Qi, E, E, it means Monday, so it won't change too. Next one, Shi, E, Shi, E, it is number two, so it doesn't change. It, is, it means 11. Last one, Bai Fen Zhi, E, it means 1%. One, 1 it still won't change because it is used in number. Okay, so this is the tone sandy of E. When E is before the first, the second, and the third, it will change to the fourth tone. But when E is before a first tone, it will change to second tone. And when it is used alone and used in a number, then it won't change. It is the first tone. Okay, now let's move on. Move on to the next part. The rules of pinyin, the rules of pinyin, the use of these two initials, E and U, for this is E, for this is U. And the rule is like this, when the finals begin with E, U, U, finals begin with these three, when they have no initials, but they can make a syllable, then we will put E and U before it, okay, when we're writing it. For example, for example, first situation, when the final begins with E, begins with E and here, E, in, and in these three finals, or starting with, or begins with E, right? We will write it as this. We just put this initial before it. For example, for this character, E, it means one, right? It means one. Actually, the meaning, the pronunciation of E is only acted by the final E. We don't need any initial. We can just pronounce it without any initial, right? We just use the final E, then we can pronounce it. But when we're writing, we need to write a initial for it, okay? So this is the first situation. And the second situation is when, when the final started with E have vowels following it. For example, vowels, you can see here is our, right? Our, so in this situation, we will remove this E and put this final, we will remove final E and put initial E before it. For example, for this, yeah, yeah. When it is a syllable, we will remove E and we will put the initial E before it. Yeah. And for Ye, Ye, we will remove, remove initial E and put final E before it. And this Yao is the same. Remove the final E, put the initial E. And this one is the same. And this one, yang is the same, and the yung, yung, okay, yung, don't forget it, it is yung, and we remove e and put the initial e before it. And this one, yu, yu, this one is a little bit different. So for this one, do you remember, it is actually yu, but it is written as this. Yo, so when we put the initial E before it, we will still get rid of this final E and put a initial E before it, okay? So we can see in this 
situation when the final begins with e when there are when there are vowels after it we will remove e and put the initial e before it and when it is you we will still remove the final e and put the initial e before it and for the other occasions for e in and in we will just put an e before it we won't remove the final e so it is the same as the as this beginning with u okay now let's see first when it begins with u we will put this thing this initial u before it and when there are vowels after it then we will remove the final u and put the initial u before it for example wa why one we removed all of the final u and replace it with the initial u. And there's another special occasion is u and u. Although they are written like this, actually they are u a and u and these two, these two. Remember? And when we are writing it with the initials, we will remove the u and put the initial u before it. Okay. Now, last occasion, our last situation is beginning with yu, yu, for yu, yu, yuan, yun. These four finals, we will put the initial e before it, and you see, we remove the two dots. We remove the two dots. Okay. So it will be easier for you to remember the rules for it. But if you cannot remember the rules, I said. You can just try to recite the table here, this table. Okay. Now let's move on to the next part. Part is the strokes of Chinese characters. There are two strokes for today. First one is shu, one go, which is vertical curved hook. Vertical curved hook. Curved. Okay, now let's see. The direction of writing it is from this and to this. First, try to write a vertical and then curve it. Don't turn like this, like a rectangle. Just turn it. Turn it here. Turn and then hook. Okay, hook. Try to write it. It is a vertical curved hook. Vertical curved hook. Okay, the example character is first one is C, which means seven. It is written first a horizontal and then vertical curved hook. And another example is left turn and a vertical curved hook, which means sun. Next stroke is hung zhe wan go, hung zhe wan go, which means horizontal turning curved hook. The difference between these two is just we put a horizontal here and then try to write a vertical and then curve it and then hook it okay, let's see the example character so first one is jiu which means nine jiu we will first write a left turning we learned before and then a horizontal turning curved hook horizontal turning curved hook jiu next one means how many ji it is the same First, a left turning and then a horizontal turning curved hook here. So these are the two strokes for today. One is this, a shu wan go vertical curved hook. And another is heng zhi wan go horizontal turning curved hook. Now let's move on to the single component characters for today. First one, qi, qi, we just learned. It is a horizontal with a with a word, we just learned it. It is a shu wang go vertical curved hook. Vertical curved hook. Qi, it means seven. Seven. Okay, next one is er. We just learned it. It means sun. It means sun. Okay, it is written in this way. First, a short left turning. And then a, a little bit longer one. A vertical curved hook. Okay, try to write it. Left turning and then a 
vertical curved hoop. This means sun. Next one is ji ji. It means uh how many how many and it originally actually referred to a small a uh, small or low table. Now it means how many and it still sometimes means a low table and ji. Okay, try to write it first, a left turning and then a horizontal turning curved hook. Okay, write again, left turning, horizontal turning curved hook. Okay, this is ji, really easy. And jiu, it looks like ji, but it is, the, it is different from this part, this part, jiu, nine. It is first a left turning and then cross it, cross it. Okay, try left turning and a horizontal turning curve. This is jiu, jiu. Okay, four new single component characters for today. Try to practice in the stroke order, second part of stroke order. We've learned before, in the last lesson we've learned, the stroke order is First horizontal and then the vertical. First left turning and then right turning, right? And today is another stroke. Stroke order is top to bottom, left to right. Actually, I talked about it before, right? So top to bottom. First like er, er, which means two. It is top to bottom, top to bottom. And when I wanna write this character three, sun, it is still the same, top to bottom, top to bottom, the same. And let's see from left to right. First one is ji, ji, we just learned it. It means how many, right? How many? And it is from left to right. First, left turning and then a horizontal turning of hook. Left to right. It is right. And another example is ba used in the from the left turning to right turning part as well. But we will write the left turning first and then right turning later, after. Okay, this is left to right, left to right. So this is all for today's class. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to recite some of the rules of today, okay? See you next time. Bye-bye.